everybody, this is Jen Baker of 800 and right behind me, I just got the most amazing dresser from my local Habitat for Humanity store. It's right down the road about 10 minutes and I just popped in the other day just to see what they had and I could not believe my eyes. I couldn't believe that this was there, first of all, and I couldn't believe that nobody else had scooped it up yet. So you better believe that I did because this guy is gorgeous and it's so old and I can't wait to work on it. So I haven't started working on it yet and I, because I got an idea for video. I thought, you know what, let me shoot a video to show folks the process that I go through when I start at the very, very beginning when I'm going to do a furniture makeover. We literally just hauled this upstairs yesterday. I work out of my apartment. I don't have a studio. I don't have a garage. Like I do everything in my apartment. Um, so minus the sanding, I do that at my parents' house. <laughs> but regardless, you know, I haven't done a thing to this and I wanted to show you not only the things that I look for when I pick out a piece of furniture, um, what drew me to this piece in particular, and then what I do when I first start um, its furniture makeover. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. So the first thing that drew me to this piece was its texture. When you have an old oil-based finish, um, eventually it wears out. So this piece has what I call gatoring um, or alligatoring. It's a texture that develops on a piece as the original finish um, fades and crackles and kind of separates from itself because it's getting old. So you can see all over the surface, there's this like gatoring here. And the reason why I like this, um, and actually Natasha Shea of Love Street Vintage kind of tipped me into this on furniture pieces. I never heard of it before. But the reason why this is so great on your pieces is because when you paint this, that's texture and it's texture that shows through. And when you go to distress or when you go to get some wax in there, um, it, it just shows up so beautifully and you, it makes it look like you did a whole lot more work than what you really did. The other thing that drew my attention was this detail that goes all the way down to the bottom. I just think that this is so pretty and I love the rounded top and then here are the drawers. Um, this piece reminds me of one that Marion Parsons worked on when she featured her European color marzipan. Every drawer has a keyhole, the gatoring continues, and it's got this really great like rounded oval trim work that goes around. So what I'm envisioning is the body to be like a pretty yellow color, and then this part and these raised pieces and probably even the knobs um, can be a pretty white, so like a yellow and a white. Um, the next thing that I did, okay, so if I kind of zoom out a little bit so you can see, I've got one, two knobs missing. So the next thing I look for is, are the knobs in the drawers? So usually if you buy furniture and if the knobs are missing, sometimes they'll put the missing knobs in the drawer. Um, and this one has them and you can see they're just like wooden dowels. So like here's a dowel and it has um, like a thread to it. So this, you know, screws on. So all I have to do is just put some wood glue on there and just reattach that one and this one. So that's a relatively easy fix. Um, I'm not too worried about it. And then since I have the drawers open, you know me, if you've been following me, you know, I love pulling out the drawers and seeing what kind of joinery my piece has. And this one has hand cut dovetails. And the reason you can tell that they're hand cut is because they are, they, first of all, there's not that many of them and um, they're sort of uneven. Like this one is not the same size as that one. And you can just kind of tell, and you can see like the pencil line or like the mark where the maker, you know, kind of drew a line saying, okay, this is where I want my dovetails to end. So that's a good indicator that you've got hand cut dovetails. The other thing is down here on the bottom I've got cute little casters. I just love casters on my old pieces. So those are the features of this particular dresser that drew me in. So now let's take a look at what I do when I'm actually ready to start working. Okay, so your initial assessment is all done. You've already looked over the piece. You've seen the features that you love. 
you know you want to buy it. Um, you've pulled out all the drawers. They are all smooth. The bottoms of them are all intact. Everything looks great. You get it home, and the first thing that I do is I take out all of the drawers, or I open up all the doors. Basically, I kind of take it apart, and I look at the inside, the guts of the piece. And <laughs> I hope you can see from there. But this thing is so dusty inside, like I can literally run my finger along and I've got a ton of dust on there. So the first thing really that you need to do, especially on a piece this old, is you have to clean it. So for dusting, um, it's not really anything that major. I just kind of take a paper towel or a Swiffer or my vacuum and I just kind of go along. Whoa, that's really dusty. And um, I just kind of wipe it down real good. This has a really, really musty smell. Um, it smells like grandma's attic. So if I have a piece that I'm working on that's really musty, I use Mrs. Meyer's Clean Day Spray. Um, I've got two scents. This one is her lemon verbena and I have the honeysuckle. So whatever I feel like smelling for the day is what I use. So I just kind of give this a good squirt and I kind of just you know, rub down the piece to, uh, to get the dirt off, the dust off. And the scent from the Mrs. Myers um, just helps to make it not smell so gross and old. The other thing is that when you open up your piece like this, you give it a chance to breathe. You give air a chance to get in here. Um, this has probably been sitting with all the drawers in it for quite some time to get it to smell like that. So um, also opening it up like this just gives it a chance to breathe and to get some freshness in there. Um, another good idea, is if you have some essential oils that you really like, you can put a couple drops on a cotton ball and just put them in like a bowl or a plate and just sit them inside and that scent will permeate the inside and help to get rid of and absorb some of that nasty musty smell. So, um, you know, kind of wiping down the inside, wipe off the top and the sides. I'm not gonna go through all that now, um, but that's kind of what I do for the inside. The other thing I look at is the structural integrity of the piece. Is anything broken? Especially on the back, a lot of times these panels will be really loose and you may have to nail one or two back in or kind of like, sometimes they'll fall out of place and you just kind of have to push them back up and put a new nail in. Um, so kind of give it a wobble, give it a shake, see if there's anything loose. Um, that's also one of my preliminary assessments when I'm buying the piece. If it looks like it requires way too much structural work than I can actually do, I won't buy it because it'll just turn into a money pit. <laughs> now this guy has two things that are loose on the bottom. These two little rungs are, um, they belong in each of the corners on the bottom and they provide um, the track that the drawers slide in and out of on the bottom. They have since become loose. There are two um, nails, there's one, and there's the other, and they're really old nails. You can just kind of tell by their shape. They don't look like nails that are today. They're not perfectly cylindrical. They actually kind of have like a rectangular shape to them. So that's another clue that this piece is really old. It's got old nails. Um, so I have two options. I can either just nail these right back in, I can screw them in, actually I have three options, or I can use some wood glue. So um, I'll decide how I want to put them back in depending on, you know, once I kind of work with them and decide what's going to be best. And then kind of the last step is I go through all the drawers and I take out all the goodies that are inside. You won't believe the stuff that I have found inside of drawers. Um, money, old newspapers, school pictures, like people just leave stuff in their drawers. And it's kind of like opening up a time capsule sometimes. So this bottom one had just a piece of contact paper on it. Um, and I'll like wipe out this drawer and vacuum it and just make sure that it's um, good to go. If there's anything sticky on the bottoms of drawers, I like to take a scraper and get those off because when you're buying a new piece of furniture, like right here, this is kind of stuck on there. I mean, you don't want to buy something that has something sticky in the drawers. Like you don't want to put your clothes in there. So make sure that when you're working on furniture, you pay attention to the inside too. Um, Cause people will probably be mo more likely to buy a piece that has clean insides over a piece that has dirty insides. So there's that one. And I think this one, yeah, this one's fine. But so in this one, I found a piece of plastic. 
I found the two knobs, a lovely little button, and a piece of contact paper, and something sticky that I don't really know where it belongs. <laughs> so now that everything, um, or once everything is all cleaned out, then I will start painting and um, executing, you know, the actual furniture makeover. But just, again, when you're working on really old pieces, a good cleaning, a good scrubbing, some minor repair work, um, it really goes a long way and sets your furniture apart from everyone else's.